Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar on engineering the smarter roads, specifically focusing on the use of biaxial geogrids in flexible pyramids for an Indian perspective. So myself, Dheeraj Reddy, working as a senior manager of pyramids in TechFab India, and uh, this is the third of a series of bi-monthly webinars which we are uh, which we have started last month, and I'm sure many of you. Uh, might have attended the previous webinars too, which were focusing on our company's uh, uh, product portfolio. And the last one was uh, focusing on the hydraulic applications of uh, uh, Tech5 India's uh, products. And regarding this session, uh, if you have any queries uh, to ask, uh, you may drop these queries in the Q&A tab, and I'll be answering all of these queries at the end of the session. And uh, Moving on to today's session, as we all know that the demand for durable, cost-effective and sustainable road infrastructure is higher than ever in India. So in this context, innovative materials and techniques are playing a pivotal role in transforming the way we design and construct our roadways. One such advancement in India has been the use of biaxial geogrids in flexible pyramids. An alternative that has shown immense potential in optimizing pavement designs and their performance. So in today's session, basically we will be discussing on the critical aspects of geogrid reinforced uh, flexible pavement systems. I will also explore how biaxial geogrid works when they are uh, incorporated in the granular layers of the flexible pavement to enhance the load distribution. Uh, thereby reducing the pavement thicknesses and extending the lifespan of the road networks and all. So we'll also discuss uh, various Indian codal provisions, the material specifications and the details of uh, what TechFab India's geogrids uh, have been tested for and how, how they are performing and all. Uh, basically, this is to ensure that the implementation of geogrids is both effective and compliant with the industrial standards. So to bring theory into practice, I'll also share a few of the successful uh, case studies from Indian projects that have benefited from the uh, biaxial geogrid technology. So by the end of the webinar, I am very sure that you will have a comprehensive understanding of uh, how biaxial geogrids can be strategically used to engineer the smarter and more resilient roads in India. So before entering into the main topic, uh, let me take a couple of minutes to introduce uh, Tech5 India to you all. So basically, uh, uh, many, of, uh, many of you might be already knowing about Tech5 India, but still, uh, to introduce Tech5 India, it started in 2003, and this is the 21st year of our innovation of geosthetic products. And uh, from 2003, we have grown year on year, and uh, we have uh, expanded ourselves with the product portfolio, with the manufacturing capacities, starting from woven geotextile, to the uh, geogrids, knitted and woven geogrids, and then we entered into the non-woven geotextile market, the composite materials, with, which is a combination of non-woven and woven. And then we started the metal gabions and uh, drainage composites and PVDs. And uh, in 2017 is the year which uh, wherein we started this uh, axial geogrids, uh, which is made up of polypropylene. And, uh, uh, then after that, we have entered into the geocell market and uh, the uh, geostrap market. Along with the geostrap, we do manufacture in-house the cavity connectors, which are used in the connection of RS walls. And then in 2021, when the world stopped due to COVID, we expanded ourselves by setting up a new factory for the uh, geohazard mitigation uh, solutions at Haridwar wherein we are manufacturing the self-drilling anchors, the, uh, the slope protection measures, and all this uh, kind of uh, uh, materials. And then uh, in 2022, we have started the uh, the tech link, the uniaxial high strength uniaxial geogrids and the erosion control mats. And in the last year, uh, uh, we have added into our portfolio the concrete canvas, which is used mainly for the slope erosion protection and the canal lining applications and all. And also the uh, dimple board, uh, which is again for a high high uh, volume drainage uh, systems and all. So this is still to 2023. 
and uh, we are again expanding our horizons where a new era of geosynthetics manufacturing is coming very soon in our uh, new upcoming facility at Bhopal. And uh, when we combine all these things, as on today, we are the largest manufacturer of geosynthetics in Asia. And our aim is to become a global leader. And we, I'm, I'm very sure that we'll be reaching that uh, target very soon. So all the products which I've shown right now are compliant to the industrial and the uh, industrial standards and the codal provisions and all the manufacturing facilities wherein we do manufacture all these products are ISO certified and our in-house laboratories are also NABL accredited laboratories. And the most important and the recent advancement is the BI certifications. For your uh, information, Tech5 India is the only company in India which has 14 number of BI certificates for various products uh, that it manufactures. So this is about uh, Tech5 India uh, on the whole. So moving on to the topic, uh, today's topic, that is the use of biaxial geogrids in uh, construction of flexible pavements. So what is the basic need for this uh, biaxial geogrids usage in road construction? As we all know that uh, the MORTH and NHA are emphasizing the use of geogrids in road construction, while the many number of circulars which have been released over past uh, three to four years. <coughs> and uh, uh, MORTH and IRC has also made available uh, various standards for design, the material specification and the installation aspects also. And the EPC and hybrid annuity model uh, projects uh, of NHAI on MORTH. These projects allow the value engineering in designs. So, which gives a great prospects for the usage of these particular uh, biaxial geogrids. And when we are planning to use a biaxial geogrid in a pavement construction, so basically there are uh, majorly three uh, objectives of the, its usage. And the first and the most widely uh, needed objective is the optimization of project cost because that is the need of the R. And this optimization is possible by minimizing the use of natural resources like aggregates, cementitious materials, even the bituminous materials, and uh, thereby leading to the significant uh, reduction in the cost and also the carbon emissions during the construction of the road project. Also, as we are optimizing the thicknesses and the uh, quantum of materials being used, there is a uh, speed in the construction of road pavements compared to the conventional uh, pavements what we have been constructing over years. So India's local manufacturing facilities are also capable of meeting the demands of the government of India's infrastructure objectives. So and hence accordingly what I what the government of India has done is uh, in recent times they have bought in or they have mandated the use of uh, BIS certified geogrids only for the road projects and accordingly they have bought in the QC orders that is the equality control uh, orders. So this is the QCO bought in by the government of India wherein it has mandated that these uh, geosynthetic products are mandatory to have the BIS uh, license whoever is manufacturing <clears throat> and the violation of this mandate will lead to the uh, uh, legal penalties. So the right side certificate is the BI certificate of Tech5 India's biaxial geogrids. Uh, we do have the BI certificate for all, all kinds of uh, biaxial geogrids which we manufacture. So entering into the working mechanism of biaxial geogrid. So when I uh, when I say biaxial geogrid in flexible pavements, basically these biaxial geogrids are used in the granular layers. That is either in the uh, GSB layer or in the WMM layer. So when a biaxial geogrid is incorporated into a particular granular layer, it works in basically uh, two working mechanisms which are predominantly affecting the strength or the modulus of a particular layer. One is the lateral restraint, wherein uh, it is confining the aggregate particles from the lateral movement. Thereby, when it is confining from the lateral movement, the stress distribution is also uh, getting affected and the impact stress distribution, which you can see in the conventional uh, section over here, is distributed for a wider area. So this is how your lateral restraint uh, works. And this lateral restraint mainly is 
impacted by the junction efficiency of the geogrids and uh, which is mainly into the polypropylene geogrids, extruded geogrids. And then we also have a tension membrane effect wherein it increases the load dispersion and uh, uh, load dispersion onto the uh, subgrade and all. So um, this, this is by virtue of the tensile strength of the geogrid. So uh, as the tensile strength of the geogrid improves, your tension membrane effect also improves. And this effect is mainly uh, beneficial in case of the uh, polyester biaxial geogrids, which have high tensile strength compared to the polypropylenes. So basically, this is the two main uh, working mechanisms uh, that impact the improvement of strengths of a granular layer in the pavement. So uh, talking about the design methodology, uh, basically the geogrid reinforced flexible pavements design is uh, pretty much similar to the conventional pavement design uh, which we have been using uh, as per IRC 37 2018. So wherein we determine uh, the CBR of the subgrade and accordingly uh, we are considering the trial thicknesses of uh, uh, pavement like the thickness of GSB, WMM, BC and TBM. And once we are determining or considering the trial thicknesses of uh, pavement, we determine the modulus of each layer that is the resilient modulus of each layer starting from subgrade and in case of uh, conventional payment uh, what irc 37 recommends is we consider gsb and wmm as a single layer and uh, determine the holistic uh, mr value that is the resilient modulus value but in case of uh, geogrid reinforced payment since we are incorporating or introducing a geogrid in a particular layer like gsb or wmm we need to separate these two layers and consider so that is, we are determining the modulus of GSB separately and WMM separately. There is a procedure prescribed for this in IRC 37, how to uh, apply the improvement factors, that is the LCR or MIF factors uh, for the uh, GSB or WMM. And this improved modulus values are then used into the uh, IIT PAVE software. So here you can see, basically in conventional pavement, we use three layer system. So uh, the bottom uh, screenshot you can see is of IITP of software, wherein here it is a geogrid reinforced payments, wherein we are using four layer system, unlike the conventional system where we use three layer system. So here, uh, if you see first, we determine the modulus of subgrade soil. Uh, for example, here 66.6 .6 is shown, that is corresponding to CBR, and then Using this modulus of subgrade, we determine the modulus of GSB, that is the granular surface, using a formula given in uh, IRC 37. And uh, here I'm considering, if you can see the typical cross section shown here, I'm considering a geogrid in, only in WML. So that means I have to apply the improvement factor. There are two kinds of improvement factor. One is uh, layer coefficient ratio, and another one is the modulus improvement factor. Layer coefficient ratio is inspired from ASHTO method. And uh, modulus improvement factor is basically uh, an extension of IRC method only. So uh, the resilient modulus of GSB, once it is determined, before the calculation of WMM modulus, we need to determine the support modulus, that is the effective of 66 and 144. So the effective of 66 and 144 will be 98. Uh, and the, uh, one, and this 98 is used uh, is used as an MR of support here in this formula. So accordingly, this 237, what you can see here, is the resilient modulus of unreinforced WM. Till now, I have not considered any benefit of geogrid. And since we are using uh, uh, geogrid in WM, then comes the application of MIF factor for this uh, biaxial geogrid. In this calculation, for the sample calculation, I'm showing you MIF of 1.95. Uh, it is simply multiplying this MIF of 1.95 to the unreinforced WMM. So that gives us the improved resilient modulus of geogrid, that is uh, 462. And this 462 is the value which we need to use uh, for the IIT PAVE software over here. So here you can see uh, the second layer from the top is 462.2, that is corresponding to WMM. And uh, accordingly, we'll get the tensile strains and uh, the horizontal strains which are induced for this particular section of pavement. So once these are uh, determined, we can calculate the design life of uh, a flexible pavement for rutting and fatigue. 
and uh, accordingly we can compare with our required design values of uh, traffic and if it is safe then it is fine or else we can optimize also if it is if we have too much of buffer so this is about the design methodology so uh, if you see in this design methodology the entire uh, design of this particular uh, reinforced geogrid reinforced pavement is dependent on the improvement factor that is uh, lcr or mif lcr means layer coefficient ratio and mif means uh, modulus improvement factor so what irc sp59 says is that we need to design the pavement with both lcr and mif method and whichever method gives the higher thickness or the conservative thickness that is the thicknesses or the crust we need to adopt for the uh construction so what are uh, these mif and lcr factors and how are they uh, determined so basically irc sp59 gives uh, various methods for uh, determining the laboratory determination of lcr and mif it includes both cyclic loading and the static loading method so as far as the uh, tech fab india's geogrids are concerned we do have uh, the uh, a certified lcr and mif factors from both types, the static loading and cyclic loading. So these are the reports from the cyclic loading testing, uh, the one with the uh, the one from CRRI Delhi, and the another one from the private laboratory uh, in uh, Jaipur, that is landmark laboratory. And we also have the static loading reports from IIT Hyderabad and IIT Patna for various uh, uh, types of geogrids we manufacture. So. When we are using this geogrids, uh, ultimately, uh, as I said in the starting uh, of the presentations, we are using it for achieving the various objects. Wherein the thickness of your uh, uh, granular layers and the DBM layer is getting optimized. And And uh, we can also, if we are not in, uh, reducing the thickness of uh, the pavement crust, we can also improve the durability of uh, uh, pavement by increasing the uh, span of uh, the or the volume of traffic which it can cater over the design period. And since we are reducing the thicknesses of the pavement, it we can also achieve the optimization in the construction timelines. And as we are uh, minimizing the usage of uh, aggregates and the bitumen materials, it leads to the optimization of or the reduction of carbon footprints on the environment. So achieving all these things leads to the reduction in the construction costs. That is the cost uh, effectiveness of the pavement. So let us consider a particular uh, case wherein I am considering 10% CBR and 50 MSA traffic. And uh, I'm comparing both conventional section, which has the regular GSB WMM and uh, DBMBC with the GeoGrid reinforced flexible pavement. So you can see with the use of one layer of GeoGrid, the 250 mm thickness of WMM is getting reduced to 210 and the DBM of 105 mm is getting reduced to 50 mm. So adding one more layer below the GSB, I can achieve lesser than 210 because dbm we cannot further optimize uh, we can optimize further the wmm layer wherein uh, 150 is the minimum thickness we need to go so we have we still have 60 mm of buffer which we can consider for optimizing by adding another layer so overall uh, for this particular thicknesses and the unit rates mentioned here uh, we can achieve in, in and around 20 to 21 percent of cost savings by just adding a single layer of geography and this and this cost savings can further improve by adding one more layer of geogrid and if if your traffic is more the savings get increased actually so this is about the cost benefit analysis so if you can see here the dbm layer basically this 105 mm of dbm in general it is constructed in two layers so if i am optimizing the thickness of this dbm to 50 mm i can complete this uh, dbm layer in single layer that means my additional one layer which I am optimizing, that construction time is getting optimized here. Even in case of WMM, if it is more than 200 mm, generally it needs to be installed in two layers. 
So if I'm adding another layer of GeoGrid here and, and getting this WMM below 200 mm, that means I can opti I can install WMM in a single layer. There also I'm optimizing certain pace of construction. So by this activity, we can reduce the construction timeline of uh, GeoGrid reinforced flexible pavements. So talking about the environmental benefits, so basically this emission of greenhouse gases for a kilometer of pavement constructed without geosynthetics, that is without geogrid in pavement, is uh, 730 metric tons of uh, carbon emissions, that is CO2 emissions. While if a pavement is constructed with a geogrid, it emits only 550 metric tons uh, of carbon emissions, which signifies that in and around 25% uh, of uh, carbon emissions are being reduced. So this is a simple chart which was published by IIT Hyderabad in a research paper, wherein they have shown the comparison of carbon emissions with variation in the CBR and uh, for different geogrids in comparison with the unreinforced pavement, which is shown in the black color. So here we can see there is a significant reduction in the carbon footprint irrespective of what geogrid we are using. There is a significant reduction in the carbon footprint uh, by adopting the geogrid in the pavement section. So we have been talking about the geogrid reinforced pavements, the design and its benefits and everything. What are the Indian standards that guide us to implement these uh, systems? Basically, and the, the starting is with the IRC 37, which is the widely used uh, uh, guidelines for the design of flexible pavements. And this IRC 37 includes the uh, usage of uh, geogrids in the pavement section. <clears throat> and then we have IRC SP 59 uh, 2019 version, which is a detailed guideline for the design and implementation of the geogrids, which includes the design methodologies, the handling and storage of geogrids at site, the installation of geogrids at site, the technical specification of geogrids, everything all together from, uh, from top to bottom. And then we have the orange book of MRTH, which includes the specification of geogrids and its installation methodology in section 703. And the recent one, uh, what we have is the BIS certificate or the BIS uh, code that is IS 17371, which was published in 2020. And it, it exclusively gives the specification of geogrids for flexible payments. Uh, and it covers both the types of geogrids, that is the uh, polyester uh, knitted geogrids and the polypropylene uh, uh, extruded geogrids. So talking about the specifications, the, <clears throat> the mechanical and the endurance properties of uh, the geogrid, which Tech5 India manufactures specifically, meets the requirements of uh, the BIS 17371 and the MRTH specification and also the IRCSP 59. So this is the table uh, which is given in IRCSP 59 and the same is the table even in the MORTH wherein there are certain requirements like uh, the stiffness of geogrid and the tensile strength at 2% and 5% strain and uh, this junction efficiency shown here is uh, applicable for the extruded geogrid alone wherein it, the requirement is the 90% of uh, ultimate tensile strength because this is the uh, criteria which affects the lateral restraint of uh, the granular layer, granular materials in the GSB or WM. And then we have uh, UV stability, wherein 70% uh, is the minimum requirement uh, for the UV stability. And meeting all these requirements, uh, TechPab uh, proposes generally five types of geogrids. We, we have the five types of geogrids in our portfolio which of course we can customize and optimize as per the project specific requirements. The standard types of geogrids is uh, uh, polypropylene 30 by 30, 20 by 20 geogrid, which is uh, manufactured by polypropylene polymers and they are punched and oriented. That is the manufacturing process. And in terms of polyester geogrids, which are knitted and woven, uh, we have three variants, that is 40 kN, 60 kN and 80 kN geogrids. So these are the five geogrids we generally have in our portfolio for the pavement applications. And we've talked about uh, uh, two different kinds of geogrids, that is polypropylene geogrid and the polyester geogrid. So let us compare both the geogrids. 
which geo grid has uh, what advantage and what limitation so that we can accordingly select in our projects it depend uh, the the right kind of product is uh, proposed for a project specific requirement in a project which is a, a specific product which is uh, applicable so both the uh, polypropylene biaxial geo grid or the polyester biaxial geo grid both these geo grids are specified in morth or irc sp59 and is17371 so as far as the specification is concerned, both the geo grid satisfy these requirements. And even the improvement factors that we discussed in the design, that is the LCR and the MIF uh, values. Uh, the Tech5 India's geo grids have both static and cyclic loading reports for uh, uh, both the polypropylene and polyester biaxial geo grids. And even the BIS certification, as I said, which is mandatory now, we do have both BI certification for both polypropylene and polyester geogrids. But compare, comparing the stiffness of the geogrid, basically the, uh, the even the physically we can witness that the stiffness of the polypropylene geogrid is relatively higher compared to the polyester, and polyester geogrid has relatively lower stiffness uh, compared to the polypropylene. At the same time, if we compare the tensile strength of the geogrid, uh, the polypropylene extruded geogrids have the strength limitation. It can be manufactured only up to 40 kN per meter strength, uh, whereas the polyester geogrids, it can be manufactured greater than uh, 40 kN also. So the tensile strength of polyester geogrids are relatively higher compared to the polypropylene geogrids. And uh, the junction efficiency, which is a parameter specified in the uh, uh, the specifications, basically polypropylene geogrids have uh, excellent uh, junction efficiency. Whereas for the polyester geogrids, this junction efficiency is not applicable because of its uh, manufacturing process. As it is a knitted and woven geogrid, uh, this junction efficiency is not applicable for uh, the polyester geogrids. And the installation damage, uh, basically, uh, since polypropylene geogrids are relatively stiff, even at the site, if we see, so the installation damage which is, when it is installed under the aggregate layers is negligible. And basically, it is less than 2% uh, loss in the strength of the geogrid. Whereas, uh, uh, we, when we see about the polyester geogrids, it's relatively higher and uh, it's uh, around 10 to 15% which of course can be, and, and Tech5 India is in the process of optimizing again this installation damage for polyester geogrid also. As far as the site installation is concerned, uh, basically this polypropylene biaxial geogrid uh, is relatively tedious to install because of its high stiffness and everything. And uh, comparatively, polyester geogrids are a little easy to install at site. And customization is concerned regarding the roll width <clears throat> due to the limitation in its construction uh, or on a, in its uh, manufacturing process. Uh, the polypropylene geogrids are uh, are not feasible to customize on in terms of its roll width uh, because of its uh, manufacturing process and everything. Whereas uh, uh, polyester geogrids, uh, we can have the, the customization in the uh, roll dimensions uh, as per the site requirements and all. But however, uh, for the polypropylene geogrids, there is always a possibility to cut and use at the site. So that uh, can be uh, optimized there. So this is comparing both the geogrids, that is uh, polypropylene and uh, polyester geogrids. So when TechFab India uh, provides the technical support, what are the tools available with TechFab India? So we do have uh, the design uh, sheets or the design uh, uh, the reports. We have the IITPF software, which we use for the designing of uh, uh, geogrid reinforced flexible payments. And we do provide a detailed design report, which of course uh, the, the clients or the customers can use it for their uh, approval process and everything. Uh, we have the uh, technical data sheets, the in-house manufacturing uh, test certificates, and the third-party test reports from the accredited laboratories. As far as the performance results are concerned, uh, we have the LCR and MIF reports, uh, which are performance based reports. And as per the required project requirements, uh, we, we do supply these documents to the customers. Mm -hmm. 
and along with the uh, uh, detailed design reports each and every uh, supply which, which we do do we do provide a brief installation methodology which includes detailed photographs and step by step procedure and the credentials also for the source approval of uh, TechFab India. We do provide the previously approved project approvals and all, and the BI certification of a particular product which we are supplying. The other other certificates like ISO certificate, the CE certification of the product, and the NABL accreditation of our laboratory. All these documents we provide. And uh, TechFab India is also a pre-approved vendor of uh, geosynthetics in NHAI which means that uh, basically we do not require uh, project specific source approval every time. Uh, it depends again on the authority who is approving. Sometimes uh, authorities require this uh, source approval document. Sometimes based on the letter they uh, approve it. So uh, we also have the project photographs which we provide to our clients for reference, uh, which, which gives them the confidence of uh, implementing at site. So this, this comprises of the source approval documents and the, and the tools available with TechFab India. So uh, till now, like it's uh, basically this, this technology or the system have been in wide usage from last couple of years. Before that, it was here and there one and uh, two projects which were implemented. But since last couple of years, it's been in wide usage. And what have TechFab achieved in this last couple of years? Uh, we have received uh, <coughs> design approvals for more than 600 kilometers of National highways. Uh, when I say 600 kilometers, it is not length kilometers. It is purely the stretch of a highway. So we have received more than 600 kilometers of design uh, approvals, and we have supplied these biaxial geoglyphs in more than 50 number of highways and uh, expressways till date uh, uh, during the last couple of years. And we do have the largest or the widest uh, range of products. Uh, specifically uh, by actual geogrids. The variety of, uh, as I said, I've shown you the five different varieties of uh, geogrids which we can supply for payment application. And I'm not sure if anyone else has these five options to a customer which we can propose. So <clears throat> the LCR or the MIF factors are certified from IIT, CRRI and the independent laboratory for both static and cyclic loading. And we have also proven this laboratory test results of LCR and MIF at more than eight number of uh, project sites uh, by virtue of uh, on-site testing. And these testings were carried out and certified by IITs. TechFab's biaxial geogrids, uh, as I said, have been certified by CRRI, IITs. Uh, we do have the third-party test reports from Bitra, that is Bombay Textile Research Association. We do have uh, CE certification, NABL accreditation for our laboratories. Since we do export our products to the abroad uh, countries, we do have Gilab certification for our laboratory, which is mandatory for uh, the export uh, requirements. So uh, as far as the highest manufacturing capacities of BIS certified, certified materials, uh, uh, we do have in order to supply huge quantities in a very short period of time as per the project requirements. Basically, these payment applications, uh, we do require uh, huge quantities of geogrids in very short uh, stipulated periods so that we can cater. So as far as the technical support is concerned, uh, we are well equipped with uh, uh, the professional designers and uh, 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 team who can provide us provide the customers with the quickest response time for design and technical proposals uh, in the industry. So uh, these are uh, the upcoming few slides. I'm going to show you few projects which we have implemented using the biaxial geogrids. Uh, this is the payment stabilization using the biaxial geogrid at uh, Mundra for the green PVC project in the state of Gujarat. So wherein the polypropylene geogrid was used uh, in the pavement stabilization. So this is uh, the photograph of uh, you installing the biaxial geogrid in the Dolera Expressway in the state of Gujarat. <coughs> so this is again uh, an expressway project wherein uh, uh, this is between Lucknow and Kanpur in the state of UP, uh, wherein the biaxial geogrids have been used uh, in the pavement for uh, optimizing the overall cost of the pavement construction. So this is uh, again another uh, uh, project near Chandrapur, Maharashtra, wherein uh, the polypropylene biaxial geogrids have been used in the in 
the WMM layer of uh, the flexible payment. So uh, this is the for the in the it is in the double layer uh, we have used that is both uh, GSB and WMM. So this is uh, one of the bypass project uh, near Barampur, uh, Orissa, where in uh, uh, it's a low volume road though, and uh, biaxial geogrids have been used to optimize the human uh, thrust and improve the durability of this uh, road. <laughs> this is again uh, in the state of Rajasthan uh, near Barmer bypass, wherein uh, uh, the biaxial geogrids were used. Uh, here it was a polyester biaxial geogrid which was used in the payment stabilization and uh, optimization. So uh, this is this was uh, uh, one of the uh, first initial projects of TechFab, wherein the uh, biaxial geogrids were used in the uh, GSB layer for the uh, stabilization of GSB in Amravati, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, it was way back in 2018, which we have uh, uh, supplied this uh, geogrids. So overall, to conclude, uh, this biaxial geogrids in road payment construction, as we have discussed and seen, these are basically technically superior and economical solutions compared to uh, the conventional solutions like uh, the regular GSB and WMM or the cement treated base and surfaces and all, uh, which we have been used for uh, from uh, a period of time. Uh, these geogrid materials comply to the initiatives of uh, more than NHA, as we have seen, uh, wherein we are optimizing the usage of natural resources like uh, aggregates and bitumen and all. Uh, thereby, we are reducing the carbon emissions and optimizing the overall project process. So the design methodologies and the material specifications uh, of this particular uh, application is included in uh, BIS, IRC and MOT standards. As we have seen the uh, uh, the the screenshots of these portal guidelines, and this particular geogrid is also included in a uh, few of the SORs that is schedule of rates, so which enables the DPR consultants to include this at the DPR stage itself. So the TechFabs biaxial geogrid materials, uh, as we have discussed, they are certified by BIS, uh, CRRI, and uh, IITs, BITRA, CE, NABL, and Kailab, and so on. So, so uh, complying to the Atmanirbhar Bharat or uh, the Make in India Initiative of Government of India, uh, TechFab India has the highest manufacturing capacities of PIS certified uh, geosynthetic products, not only the biaxial geogrids, all kinds of geosynthetic products. And we are the only company in India which has 14 BIS licenses for various products uh, which we manufacture. And uh, this enables uh, us to supply huge quantities in a very short period of time. And all our manufacturing facilities are ISO 9001 and 2015 uh, quality certification for its manufacturing. And as I said, uh, we our laboratories are NABL and Kailab accredited laboratories. So we do provide uh, the engineering and uh, techno commercial assistance to all the stakeholders uh, right from the inception of the project to its completion. Uh, wherein we can maximize the project returns. So this is about the use of biaxial geogrids in flexible payments with respect to the Indian scenario. And uh, for any queries, even in the future, apart from the queries which we have dropped in in the Q&A box, uh, you can contact us at these uh, uh, contact numbers and email IDs, and we'll be at your disposal uh, at the shortest period of uh, our time. So now. For uh, let me see the uh, Q and A tab. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chandrakant is asking. Please share the SOR uh, which includes the uh, geogrid. Sure, sir. We'll do one thing. I'll uh, uh, the email IDs which I have shown, the email IDs or the mobile numbers which I have shown. If you can contact me uh, personally, what we can do is we can share the SORs uh, personally to your email ID. Uh, basically, this is we have the geogrids included in the Maharashtra PWD SOR and uh, even the uh, 
CPWD Delhi SOR also. There are other uh, couple of SORs. We will we, we'll share you the documents to you, sir. Uh, please uh, share us the email ID or you can contact us at the mobile numbers or the email IDs which we have shown. At the end of the Q&A session, I'll again show you the email ID and contact number. Uh, if anyone has any kind of uh, requirement, you can please contact us. Uh, Mr. Ansaf uh, says, does this chain crawler affect uh, biaxial geogrids uh, during pavement? Uh, I understand it is for the construction aspect. Basically, uh, the pavers which we use for the uh, geogrid inputs should be a rubber padded uh, pavers. Uh, the regular, uh, uh, if it is not rubber padded, basically the, there is a uh, possibility of geogrid getting damaged and all. So we should uh, use a uh, rubber padded uh, pavements uh, in that case. <clears throat> and uh, the impact of uh, uh, junction efficiency, Arthur Engineering uh, asks the impact of junction efficiency. Basically, the impact of junction efficiency mainly uh, occurs in the lateral restraint of aggregates. It prevents the lateral movement of aggregates and it holds together these aggregates and helps in the uh, impact reduction into the uh, bottom layers. So this junction efficiency plays a crucial role in the improvement of modulus as, as our uh, polypropylene extruded geogrids has a very high uh, uh, stiffness. It improves the uh, modulus of the geogrids by virtue of the junction efficiency majorly. And the next question is up to how much MSA traffic by actual geogrid can, uh, is more cost efficient. So basically, uh, there is no restriction on the MSA, uh, though we cannot use this, uh, by actual geogrids for, uh, the perpetual payments due to the, uh, policy restraints, but otherwise for the regular payments, we, uh, we can use, uh, there is no restriction with regards to the traffic MSA, but uh, based on the requirement of traffic, we can decide whether we use for the single layer of geogrid or the double layer of geogrid and everything. So this is about uh, uh, traffic MSA query. Please provide the case study of project road where geogrid used along with its performance details. So regarding the case studies, uh, I'd like to update you that we do have uh, uh, the complete compendium of case studies. It's not only about uh, the biaxial geogrids in pavements, but all other applications with regards to road pavement applications, ground improvement, uh, snow erosion control, everything. We do have a compendium and uh, it is uploaded in our website www.tech5india.com. So you can visit that website and download the case studies individually also based on your application requirement or else even the complete compendium also. And also we have the mobile application, Tech5 India mobile application, which also enables you to download with your studies and compendium, etc. So uh, this is about uh, queries. So I have a few more uh, queries just a minute. What do you mean by placing one layer of geogrid in pavement? Can it be multiple layers? Yes, basically placing one uh, layer of geogrid means we can place one layer in GSB and one layer of w in, in WM. So that means in a particular layer, we can only place one, la one layer of geogrid. But for example, if I have used geogrid in uh, GSB layer, there is also a possibility to use geogrid, another layer of geogrid in WM. That is, that is what I meant, uh, meaning the number of uh, additional layer of geogrid. So max, we can use two layers. That's it. So what type of biaxial geogrids can be used for uh, small roads with CBR of 4? CBR of 4 means it's a, a pretty weak CBR comparatively. Uh, generally, we have CBRs more than 8 uh, in the majority of projects. But uh, if you have CBR of 4, we, we need to design it and we need to design, uh, check what kind of biaxial geogrids we can use uh, for a low volume. Uh, I, I, I presume the low volume means less than 10 MSA. So we, yes, we can design it even for that case. Depending on the traffic, we can design and we can provide you that. Does the geogrid do not get damaged uh, for the pavement, uh, for the paver movement? So basically this, uh, as, as I have shown in the comparison of polypropylene and polyester, I have shown one uh, condition comparison regarding the installation damage. That is what I meant uh, instead of in, in terms of installation damage. That is when we are using the paver uh, above geogrid, how much 
to how much extent this geogrid can get damaged. The, uh, uh, your polypropylene extruded geogrid has a very negligible damage, which is less than 2%. And uh, whereas polyester has a uh, relatively higher damage up to 10%, 10 to 15%, which of course, we, as I said, we are optimizing that as well. So this is about the installation damage. Uh, method to conduct non-destructive test to check the LCR and MIR. So basically, uh, in site, we we need to check this LCR and MIR in the trial patches only. Uh, it is a non-destructive uh, testing only. We do not uh, uh, destroy the geogrids there. It is uh, by the uh, plate load test and uh, uh, these things we can use and uh, we can uh, conduct the on-site testing as well. It's non-biodegradable, so will it harm the environment further? Uh, it will not harm the environment. Basically, it is a non-biodegradable. The reason is it, it is essential to be non-biodegradable because it has to serve the entire lifetime of uh, your road uh, uh, pavement. So it has to be a non-biodegradable material. And of course, as it is a, a polymeric material, it is non-biodegradable. And uh, the environmental effect, it will not have uh, any kind of environmental effect uh, further. Does Tech5 uh, provide a list of interface coefficients of GeoGrid? Uh, I didn't understand the meaning of interface coefficients. Uh, basically, uh, the uh, the inter interaction coefficients, I presume, uh, they are ma majorly used for the RE wall designs and uh, other things like pull out or uh, other disco uh, reduction factors and all. So, but in case of pavements, we only require the LCR or MIF factors uh, which are required in the design of uh, pavements. And yes, Tech5 India do provide these uh, uh, values along with the reports uh, based on the project specific requirement. Is there any code for designing apart from IIT PAV? IIT PAV is a software, uh, sir, and the code is the IRC 37, which is the only acceptable code in India. So, or IRC 37 and IRC SP 59, these are the two codes uh, which are used for designing uh, these pavements. And do you manufacture any geogrid composite for pavements? Yes, sir. Uh, we, as, as, I, as I shown in the uh, presentation, we do manufacture five kinds of geogrids for flexible pavements. And as far as geocomposite is concerned, we have uh, two different kinds of geocomposite which are used for drainage requirements. So uh, that we can uh, uh, present in a different uh, session. Any reduction in BC layer thickness will help uh, of, no, BC layer we cannot reduce. See, basically BC is the varying course layer, which is not supposed to be reduced. And even in the conventional payments, BC, uh, minimum thickness of BC itself is used. The layers which we can optimize is uh, DBM, uh, WMM and GSB. So these are the only uh, layers, BC cannot be optimized. Uh, shall we use geogrid in composite payment? See, basically, geogrids in composite payments, there have been certain uh, uh, instances where uh, the design consultants have designed uh, the geogrids in composite payments. Uh, but as far as Tech5 India is concerned, we, we do provide the design reports or the calculations from our side only with the uh, the regular uh, WMM and GSB. So because uh, we do not have the uh, the laboratory certified LCR or MIF factors for the uh, CTSB along with the WMM case. So we propose only WMM and GSB's case. Can we use GeoGreen perpetual payments? Perpetual payments are basically uh, uh, there have been one or two cases where we have tried to propose perpetual payment, but there are certain policy restrictions uh, from the ministry uh, where we cannot uh, use the uh, geogrids and optimize the thicknesses of uh, bituminous layers in the perpetual payments. What are the advantages of use of triaxial geogrid instead of biaxial? See, basically, uh, uh, biaxial geogrid or triaxial geogrid, ultimately, we are using these uh, geogrids for optimizing the crust of the pavement and the triaxial geogrids was uh, widely used in the global country globally uh, it was widely used but as far as india is concerned 
uh, due to the restrictions of uh, the BIS and everything, uh, we are supposed to manufacture a geogrid which complies with the BIS standards and uh, hence we manufacture by action. And of course, uh, regarding the triaxial geogrid, we can in, in future, if the uh, code allows us to manufacture and everything, we, we can definitely pursue. Have you any comparison of life cycle, life cycle cost analysis of conventional pavement and uh, pavement with geogrid layers? So basically, we have only carried out the initial uh, cost comparison. There is the construction cost comparison, but the life cycle cost comparison uh, requires much detailed analysis like uh, the reduction in the construction time and the maintenance uh, optimization and everything. That, uh, unfortunately, we do not have at present. We have uh, the construction cost comparison. So, Next question is, as these polymeric geosynthetics are non-biodegradable, so often leads to microplastics in soil, which makes soils harmful. And current studies have been done to use biodegradable natural geosynthetics like coir, geogrids, and geo cells. But, sir, coir is a uh, geo, coir, geo grids, and geo cells. Basically, since coir is a biodegradable material, so maybe maybe after two years or three years, if that gets degraded. Uh, naturally, what about the strength of that particular granular layer in which we are using? So that is the reason uh, in case if we are improving the strength of a particular layer, it is recommended to use non-biodegradable materials. And, and these non-biodegradable materials uh, do not uh, like excrete uh, the microplastics into the soil and it do not harm any kind of uh, uh, soil uh, in the root So. Uh, I'm not sure how effective coir geogrids will be because <clears throat> what I understand uh, that these biodegradable materials after two years or three years, if they degrade, so your uh, GSB or WMM in which we are using this geogrid will be like an unreinforced one. Only. It, it doesn't have any reinforcement further. Why RDSO has only 65 by 65 in PP? Sir, basically RDSO is a uh, specific for railway applications and uh, the 65 by 65 is required since uh, RDSO also proposes to use the geogrid in the ballast layer and ballast has much higher size of uh, aggregates compared to the GSB and uh, WMM what we use in road pavement. <clears throat> so that is the reason uh, it proposes 65 by 65 aperture instead of the regular uh, 38 by 38 aperture in uh, pavements. How much uh, strength reduction is expected over a period of time? Is there any study done? So basically, we have uh, carried out uh, the creep analysis for the geogrids. And uh, uh, as far as the uh, polypropylene extruded geogrids is concerned, so there is no much effect of creep since it is a very stiff material. And uh, the major uh, thing is that in road pavement, it is not a sustained load first thing. It is a repeated load. So even the uh, reduction in the strength is uh, negligible as uh, I can say in a, in a longer period of time. Yeah, uh, could you please share your contact uh, details? So uh, I'll do one thing. I'll, <clears throat> I'll share my screen again and I'll uh, display the contact numbers and email IDs there. So you can note it down and Whoever has the queries further, uh, you can uh, just contact us at any time and uh, even any kind of documents or support needed, we can uh, provide you uh, your personal email IDs. So I am just sharing the screen. So you can note down uh, our email IDs and the phone numbers. So and write to us or contact us and we'll be happy to uh, provide you with all the details uh, which you require. So once again, I'd like to thank everyone who has uh, uh, taken your valuable time and attended today's session. And uh, I request everyone to continue your uh, uh, active participation to our further webinars also. We'll be informing you uh, as and when it uh, is scheduled. So thank you and thank you very much.